Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna Ace, back again with another DVD Blu-ray Collections video. Within the next week or two, I'm going to be collecting steel books as well. And I've been trying to decide the best way to handle uh, indicating which videos have steel books in them and which ones don't. Because I don't want to change the name of the title of this series. What I've come up with so far is say DVD and Blu ray collections video part seven, and then in parentheses, Steel Book Fortifies for those uh, steel books. You can let me know down there whether you think that's a stupid idea or a brilliant idea or whatever. Now I'm going to be shouting out two channels in this video, one in the UK and one in the US. Since I received a lot of subscribers from the UK when I first started this channel, I'll start there. The channel in the UK that I'm shouting out is called Snaztastic. Now I've been subscribed to him for quite some time, a long time. As you can gather from his name, he uh, is into retro gaming and specifically he loves the SNES, the Super Nintendo. In fact, his collection of SNES games is beautiful. He has them all boxed, original boxes, and then he has them in the protective uh, clear sleeves that you can buy in cases really really clear transparent cases and he has them all up on shelves and his collection just looks beautiful so if you're into the Super Nintendo and retro gaming uh, you might want to check out Snaztastic. Now the channel here in the US Adam Spence. I've known Adam for a long time as well uh, we both belong to a group. A number of people belong to this group, actually. I haven't participated actively in quite some time, but I am a member of this group. The group is comprised of myself, Adam Spence, Gamer Jitsu, Jay Blackheart, and a number of others. And it's called I don't use strong language on this channel, so I'll say the Bull SHIT Gamers. Now, for whatever reason, they took to calling me Papa Smurf within this group. But we were doing podcasts on Skype, and then Adam would take the uh, footage. He would take footage from our channels and he would use graphics and he would um, put together these videos that were basically a Reader's Digest version of our podcast. His channel primarily concentrates on gaming and laser discs. And I'm afraid I'm to blame for him getting into laser discs. For a while, I was sending him boxes of Laserdiscs that I had uh, duplicate copies of. And he was nice enough to send me some boxes in response, or in return, of vinyl LPs, which I really, really appreciated. Don't tell him this, though. He didn't really need to do that. I was more than happy to send him duplicate copies of Laserdiscs. Anyway. Snestastic and Adam Spence. Links down there. Now, I have been trying to decide whether to bring this up. I finally decided that I would. I normally don't look at the number of subscribers that I have. I normally don't go into the analytics. I just go about my business uploading videos and commenting to people's videos and I try and reply to every comment made to the videos that I do. 
but I noticed recently that while the last time I had looked, I was close to 2,000 subscribers. And I noticed well, I've lost over 300 subscribers. So I went into the analytics to try and determine what was going on. And if you look at the graph for the uh, number of subscribers that I have, it's a flat line, and then it'll spike straight up and then right back down again to the flat line. I'll go over and then I'll go straight down, and straight back up, and go spike up, spike down, and you know, over and over again. Although obviously the spike downs are more uh, in number than the spike ups because otherwise I wouldn't have lost 300 subscribers. Lately, I have been getting a lot of new subscribers, which I greatly appreciate. I appreciate all of my subscribers. So if you have subscribed to my channel lately, then I really appreciate it. But at looking at my videos, I cannot determine a rhyme or a reason as to what's going on what videos are turning people off and which videos are turning people on and what am I saying that is turning people off I'm not going to say what am I saying that turns people on because I'm an old man but uh, at looking at my more, more popular videos there is no rhyme or reason the eighth most watched video and don't worry I have plenty of DVDs and Blu-rays to show is a video called Band in the USA Disney Film Song of the South. In that video I talked about how Disney has sworn that they will never ever let it be seen in the US again. Not in theaters, not on TV, not on video, not in a classroom of film students, nothing. It's readily available in numerous countries, but not here. I have a Japanese import. At the time, it was the only known Japanese import of Song of the South. But since then, I believe two more have been found, and a Hong Kong release has been found. Anyway, that has 3,132 views. Then there's cleaning and NES cartridge and label, 4,531 views. There is the video where I compare my Japanese Sega Master System with my Western Sega Master System Model 1. That has 6,004 views. Uh, there is a video where I played a 12-inch maxi single in its entirety of uh, the Falco song, Rock the Amadeus, the American edit. It has 6,993 views. Zuma Deluxe Play video. 7,260 views. Ultraman VCDs from Movie Freak 5150. He sent me over a hundred and maybe close to 150 Ultraman and Godzilla VCDs. These are pre reports, not pirated copies. 27,059 views. I did a review of the GameCube game, Power Rangers Dino Thunder. No play footage, I just talked. 39,666 views. And my top watched video is a Laserdisc clip video. Sadly, I've had to take most of my Laserdisc clip videos down because of YouTube and copyright issues. But that hasn't happened with this one. So laser this clip video and I show in its entirety a Beetle Bailey uh, made for television cartoon from the 60s. And it looks beautiful. That laser disc looks beautiful, stunning. Anyway, 48,558 views. Normally I'm around 100 to 200 views on my videos. So based on this list that I 
just read out to you. There's no rhyme or reason to my videos. Which ones are going to be popular and which ones aren't. So this is where um, the favor comes in. If you please comment below, or even better, if you do a response video about it, I would greatly appreciate it. Because I've been racking my brain trying to figure out what is going on as far as the number of subscribers that are, I have on my channel. I know everybody loses subscribers and gains subscribers and loses and gains and loses and gains. But to this degree, it, it doesn't make sense. Okay. This is going to have, this video is going to have a lot of uh, Jerry Anderson stuff in it, but not exclusively. I have enough DVDs and Blu rays here to fill six 50 minute videos. So here we go. These are U.S. issues Thunderbirds, set one from A&E. I bought these used for about $60 a piece and it's turned out to be a good investment because not only do I love the series but my kids both love this series and so each of these sets has been viewed hundreds of times. This is Thunderbirds set 2. There were two seasons of uh, Thunderbirds and sadly the series was cancelled amidst or within season two because uh, Jerry Anderson's backer Lou Grade and his outfit ITC could not find an American outlet for this series. Originally it was going to be a half hour series and Lou Grade and they had produced the first few in you know, half hours. And Lou Grade said, make these an hour because it'll be easier to sell in America. They needed the American market because this series was very expensive to produce. In fact, I talked with uh, Jerry Anderson on Prodigy. Remember Prodigy? Years ago. And uh, he mentioned that if, it, if the series were produced today, that was years ago, the same production standards, it would cost well over a million dollars per episode to produce. Uh, so they needed the American market because the series was so expensive to do. They um, were very meticulous with this series. You can tell that a lot of effort went into it. So what they did was they padded out the first few that they'd already produced with extended launch sequences for the various Thunderbird craft and filmed a few other scenes and padded them out to an hour and then from then on they produced hour-long episodes. But I worked in television 25 years and my opinion is for what it's worth the series would have been easier to sell in the U.S. had it been half an hour. Because hours, so you have to look at things from the television station program director's point of view. Finding a slot for an hour show is harder than finding a slot for a half hour show. But as I said, that's just my opinion. Did I show this already? Set three. Now, ITC had a lot of success getting uh, British shows on American television. A lot of shows on American television in the 60s and 70s especially. Um, so, it's kind of interesting that this is a series he, he wasn't able to sell in the American market. 
I happen to love the series. This is set for. They are currently remaking this series. I think they did a remake of Captain Scarlet and the Mistrons that was CGI, but I I haven't ever seen a copy of an episode, so I don't know uh, if they actually did or not. But they are currently remaking Thunderbirds at Pinewood. That combines live action with CGI, and. Um, that is set to premiere in the UK it's either 2014 or 2015 but I think it's 2014 but so far there is no American uh, outlet for that remake hopefully it does so well in England that uh, the sci-fi network or somebody picks it up set five I know there had been a Japanese animated Thunderbirds series, but I've only seen clips of that, not entire episodes. This is the final set, set six. There's Lady Penelope. And her Rolls Royce. And they had to have the design of their futuristic Rolls Royce approved by Rolls Royce. That has the Rolls Royce emblem on it. On the uh, grill in the front. If you've seen uh, the movies they made in the 60s, United Artists funded two movies of, of the Thunderbirds that used Super Marionation, the same as the series. Thunderbirds are go and Thunderbirds 6 and I'll have to talk to her later. Thunderbirds 6 there's a shot in there that must have been a pain to do because at one level they had Lady Penelope's Rolls Royce going down the road. And up above that, they had, I believe it was Thunderbirds 1 and Thunderbirds and Thunderbird 4 uh, pacing her at low altitude. And then above that, they had another craft that was following them giving them an aerial escort. So you had the car moving and you had these uh, vehicles, air vehicles moving and then you had another air vehicle moving. Really really cool and it must have been a pain to do. I can't resist. In other words, fan. Five. Four. Three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Okay, now while you had Jim Henson advancing the art of uh, hand puppets, you had Jerry Anderson advancing the art of marionettes. And this series takes it a step further. I don't think this was, um, yep, it says filmed in Super Marionation, but the heads are smaller. They advanced to the point where they could put their motors inside that made the lips move. 
that were synced up with the tape recorder that had the uh, soundtrack on it. And so the mouths would move in sync with what the characters were saying. They did that with Thunderbirds too. But they had miniaturized everything to the point where they were able to make the heads uh, lifelike and proportional in size to the figures. Does that make sense? Anyway, this is Captain Scarlet and the Mr. Arms. I believe they added a bit for the American release. Uh, Captain Scarlet is invincible or indestructible. You are not. Apparently, they think Americans are too stupid to know that you can't do some of the things that they do in this show. But this is a very well produced show. Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons. Okay, another Jerry Anderson series. Uh, Lou Grade had been pushing Jerry Anderson for years to start producing in live action. And he was putting it off and putting it off until he felt comfortable doing it. Now this isn't the first series that he did that was live action. I believe that was The Protectors. That's what I think it was called. Anyway, I don't have a copy of any episodes of The Protectors, so I don't know. But uh, I have seen clips of it on YouTube and it looks great. This series, this is the complete series of UFO. Well, it's not. It's set one. See, I contradicted myself. This has... What does this have? 13 episodes. Commentary by creator Jerry Anderson on the premiere episode, Identified. Alternate video outtakes. Jerry Anderson bi uh, biography and filmography. Production stills, photo gallery, interactive venues, and scene selection. What's really cool is there's an alternate opening that you can choose for the pilot episode that starts off more violent than the other opening, the opening they, they used. By the way, this series, Captain Scarlet and the Mistrons, the opening for this series, uh, the opening credit sequence bit, was a temporary thing. It was not meant to be permanent, but it was meant to uh, be used in, in the interim until they produced uh, the, the actual opening. But so many people liked the opening that was made, the temp opening, that it became the opening. And I like it. I think it's a really cool opening. Okay, this is another series I'm going to have to finish. I have most of the series on Laserdisc. There were only two episodes they didn't release on Laserdisc, and that was because uh, Image Entertainment would have had to pay a bu bucket full of money to get the rights to it because it had been chopped up and made into a movie uh, for television sale. And so to get the rights to that, they would have had to have paid a lot more. And the series didn't sell all that well to begin with. In fact, I think it was one of the lowest run uh, series that um, image put out. By that I mean the fewest amount of copies made per volume. Talk about Space 1999. The original concept for this series was that it was going to be a sequel or a follow-up series to UFO. Because Jerry Anderson noticed that the episodes that were heavily set on the moon garnered higher ratings in the U.S. than those that didn't. So it was going to be set on the moon 
and it was going to be called UFO 1999. Eventually that morphed into Space 1999. That is set one. And this is set two. That gets us through episode 12. So, not even halfway through the first year. And it was a show that had two years, although Jerry Anderson in later years said he preferred the first series of Space 1999 over the second. And I agree with him. I prefer the first year as well. This series was another that advanced the art of Supermarionation from Jerry Anderson. This is the entire series of Show 90. Okay, the complete first season of the Starsky and Hutch. This includes um, original TV promo spots, exclusive inter new interviews with David Soul and Paul Michael Blazer, featurette Starsky and Hutch, the movie featurette, featurette It's Harder Than It Looks, featurette The Third Star, and making of Behind the Badge. Well, it's a making of documentary called Behind the Badge. But they worded it weird. Okay, this next series is a British sitcom that was had extremely high ratings, but it was extremely controversial. It was on Thames Television, and I believe it was their highest rated show at the time, and in any event, they canceled it while it was still top of the chart, so to speak. The reason was any slang word, British slang word that you can think of for a black person is spoken in this series. This series, by the way, was remade for the U.S., but that didn't last long, which is usually the case. You would think that this is the inspiration for All in the Family, but that series was inspired by the British series um, Till Death Do Us Part, I believe is the name of it. Anyway, I'm talking about Love Thy Neighbor. This is PAL Standard. So I, I imported it. I imported this years ago. And. Um, It's region coded zero, so all regions. You just have to be able to play PAL. Oh, and if an American series or if American producers had made this show, they would have done things completely differently. Because the white racist is a member of the Labor Party. And the black guy right there, can't say African-American because he's not American. Anyway, um, he is a member of the Tories. 
is very conservative. In the States, that would have been the other way around. There are seven episodes plus the original pilot. This is the very original pilot episode that has never before been broadcast and is presented here for the first time. In this episode, pilot episode, Gwendolyn Watts uh, plays Edie's wife, Joan. So the casting changed there. After that, the pilot. Did I show the complete second series? These were put out by uh, Fremantle Media. Right below that it says Thames. Sorry, it's pronounced Thames. But I, watching this, I was shocked. By all the racial slurs, it's like, they let that on television in England. It's really funny, but anyway. Next up is a DVD that I could have well been in, but I'm not. But I do know four of the people that were talked to in this uh, documentary. They weren't uh, featured in the documentary, but they were spoken to. So yes, I know four people who they interviewed in Trekkies. I know a fifth person who could have been interviewed, but she said every time she saw the camera crew, she ran in the opposite direction. She famously wore that uniform while on jury duty. Oh, that's called a rat. Okay. I love this. Stop motion animation done by Rankin Bass for theatrical release. Mad Monster Party. There was a television station in Renton, Washington, which is a suburb of Seattle, that ran this every single day at the same time. And it's a musical. Even Boris Karloff. The Boris Karloff lookalike is played by Boris Karloff. And Monster's Mate, who looks like Phyllis Diller, is voiced by Phyllis Diller. This was a successful film, incidentally. There was a made-for-TV follow-up that uses traditional animation. I still haven't opened this and watched it. Called Mad, Mad, Mad Monsters. Kind of a take on the title of the movie, Mad, 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 Mad World. Except one was mad. But the weird thing is... All the characters that were killed off in this are alive in this. So go figure. This was put out by Classic Media. Okay, I've shown these before in other videos, so I'll go fast. Uh, 
How'd that happen? I was sure I had the first season. Anyway, the Bob Newhart show, the complete second season, opened and watched. The complete second season, sealed. I'm going to have to rectify that. The complete third series, uh, season. The complete fourth season. And I believe the series ran longer than that. So I've got some buying to do. Okay. Scooby Doo and the Monster of Mexico. I think we have this on DVD. This is on Blu ray. Scooby Doo and the Legend of the Vampire on Blu ray. Okay. This is uh, IP Man. IP Man. This was a great buy. I'm not going to go over them all, but there are 50 horror films to make up this collection. It's on 10 discs. If I remember correctly, 12 discs. No, it's on 12 discs. I hadn't opened this yet, but my eldest daughter has gotten into this series, and so she opened it and watched it. Forensic Files. This is the longest running series of its type in America. It's run for well over 12 years. This is uh, serial killers from stranglers to snipers. Twelve episodes, if I forgot to say. This is the complete season one of The Muppet Show. What's cool here is. Um, they have, uh, the, well, they have the original Muppet Show pilot, which didn't dare. They, the, they have a gag reel, and uh, what I found really interesting is the original Muppet pitch reel, the presentation by Jim Henson that started it all. This actually used the newscaster character from the Muppet Show. And he, he starts off very plainly talking about how the producer behind the series is the same man who produced the hit series Laugh-In. And he starts uh, talking directly to the heads of each of the three networks that we had at that time. And uh, he gets more and more frantic and more and more exuberant as you get into it. And finally, that whole thing's going nuts. Typical Jim Henson stuff. But it's hilarious. The complete first season of Taxi.
Gladiator with Russell Crowe. By the way, a little trivia. Did you know that when he got married, they they had uh, I think they had hired a cover band to do it, but they played the ABBA song. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. That was a pro's wedding. Okay, well, this, when it was originally released, had three different endings. And this is actually a really good movie. My wife and I both love this movie. Clue. The movie. Now, depending on which theater you saw it in and at what time, you would get a different ending. Theoretically, you would never know which ending you would get. When it was released on video, they would combine all three endings in a strange sort of way. Now, they've got this, this is in widescreen, you can select, use one of the alternate endings at random, and it'll choose at random which one it uses. Or you can uh, watch it the way it's typically been shown on television and on home video, using all three endings. This has a wonderful cast. By the way, produced by Deborah Hill. Horror fans should know her name. Story by John Landis and Jonathan Lynn. Screenplay by Jonathan Lynn. But the cast includes Eileen Brennan, Tim Curry, Madeline Kahn, Christopher Lloyd, Michael McKeon, Martin Mole, Leslie Ann Warren. Music by John Morris. And the whole cast is really good. Tim Curry is a standout, and so is uh, Madeline Kahn. I think they remade that movie, didn't they? Still haven't opened this, and I don't know why. The complete series of the Hanna Barbera classic, Wacky Races. I still contend that Dastardly was based on British, late British comedic actor Terry Thomas. Which would make Butley Eric Sykes. Now, that had two spin off series. Now, I've only got one of them, but it's the complete series of well, Dastardly and Mutley in their flying machines is what the series is called and Terry Thomas and Eric Sykes uh, appeared together in the film Those Magnificent Men in Their Flying Machines so that, that just reinforces my opinion you can take it or you can leave it Okay, sci-fi collector's set. This includes leeches. Uh, rated R for some violence and drug content, 2003. The cold equations. Not rated, violence. No copyright date. Last Lives, Adult Situations, Violence, from 1998. And Firehead, starring Christopher Plummer, Martin Landau, and Chris Lemon. All three of which I've, I've heard of. 
Rated R for language. No date. Cast isn't as strong on the other films. Okay. The 70s. Bell bottoms to boogie shoes. I lived through the 70s. Graduated high school in the 70s. Graduated from university in the 70s. Tail end of the 70s, but still. This is from Sinister Cinema. 79 AD. The thing about their DVDs is, apart from the fact that they're on DVD-Rs, they have a generic thing on the back. It says the same thing on every single one. From Sinister Cinema. The world 1,000 years from now. It's actually called 1,000 years from now. But they added the world there on their ad campaign. And it's also known as Captive Women, according to the spine. Okay, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, Tall Tales. This features one, two, three, four episodes. And is from N Circle Entertainment, originally made by Deke. What some people would mispronounce their their name because it's spelled D I C. I'm not going to tell you how they would pronounce it probably, but it's pronounced Deek. And at one time Deek was owned by Disney, but Disney eventually sold Deek. Okay, I have this on VHS. Laserdisc, DVD, and now Blu-ray. The Silent Adventure. As I mentioned in a previous video, I saw this in the theater. I thought the opening sequence before the ship capsized was rather weak. But I love the rest. Gene Hackman, Ernest Borgnine, Red Buttons, the lovely Carol Lindley, Roddy McDowell, and I can't make up that last name, Stella Stevens, Shelley Winters, uh, Jack Albertson, Pamela Sue Anderson, Pamela Sue Martin, Eric Shea, and Leslie Nielsen. I skipped over one, but who cares? Okay, this stars Shrek and Company, and it includes a parody of Michael Jackson's thriller, Scared Shrekless. Also has a psycho parody. Oh no. Don't go to the Boots Motel.
movie that I really like, although some people don't. The Car. Originally produced by Universal. This was released under license by Anchor Bay. And The Car from Universal. A lot of horror movies being made at the time that this was made. But this is the only one that could say that it had as a technical advisor a member of the Church of Satan. Leave that up to you as to whether that's a plus or a minus. Now, this movie, I love and I hate. It depends on what mood I'm in. Widescreen, Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. 50 First Dates. I love the cover version, though, at the end of What a Wonderful World, which was originally done by Louis Armstrong. Twelve Rounds Extreme Cut. James Garner, Eva Marie Saint, and Rod Taylor in the excellent 36 Hours. Highly recommend 36 Hours. If you haven't seen 36 Hours, you need to watch 36 Hours. Have I made it clear that I like 36 Hours? Well, I do. The Avengers 1964 set one. This is a US release. This was when Pat, Pat, Patrick McNeese, um, who played John Steed, his sidekick, was played by Honor Blackman, who would of course go on to appear in Goldfinger as Pussy Galore. Set two, 1964. There she is again. Sixty-seven, set one. Now we're into the um, Diana Rig. Episodes. Over fourteen hours, martial arts masters Bruce Lee, Sonny Chiba. This has the real Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee the man the myth, Fist of Fury, bonus feature, Bruce Lee biography, Street Fighter, Return of the Street Fighter, Sister of Street Fighter, bonus features, Sonny Chiba biography, uh, Shogun's Ninja, Ninja Wars, Rage of the Masters, bonus feature, The History of Martial Arts. Sherlock Holmes collection with Peter Cushing as Dr. Not as Dr. Watson. Try to make a mistake because he had he did play Dr. Uh, Dr. Watson 
in uh, some Sherlock Holmes adaptation I saw. But he plays uh, Sherlock Holmes in this series. Unfortunately, not all of this series survives. This, these are the episodes that survive. Chips, the complete series one or season one. This was released about ten years ago, ten, eleven years ago. And they followed it with the complete second season. And then they stopped. Because the third season starts off with a two hour special. And it has a huge guest star cast. And a lot of music from the period was used. And to secure all the rights, um, they determined that uh, the series didn't sell as well on DVD. Not well enough to uh, warrant the release of season three. But I contend they could release season three without it, without the premiere episode, and release the premiere episode by itself. Maybe they could do it that way. This is a really good movie. I have it on Laserdisc, I have it on VHS, stars Robert Shaw, Bruce Stern, Martha Ke Keller, it's in widescreen, Black Sunday. Get your minds out of the gutter, that's a blimp. Some of you might have flashed back to Woody Allen's everything you ever wanted to know about sex, but we're afraid to ask. A certain sequence in there. Okay, I wish I had the complete run of this series, but I don't. This is the complete series one, POW standard of Blake 7. But uh, this series is famous for, I should say, the overall series. It's famous for killing off the entire cast. Okay, this is the complete series two of Blake Seven. It's well what worth watching, even though no one comes out of it alive. I don't know what happened with that. I'll have to show it later. More engineering disasters. This is from the History Channel. Howard Hughes and the Spruce Goose. Television window to the world. Angels, good or evil? Potions or poisons?
Concord Alpha Delta, an intrepid journey. This is how they got one of the SSTs to its final resting place in the U.S. for the USS Intrepid, which has been turned into a floating museum of aircraft. This is the Haunted Histories collection from the History Channel. Vampire Secrets. Hauntings. Poltergeist. Yes, this is part of the same box set. I'm putting it right back where it was originally when I opened it, right in the middle. Salem Witch Trials. And the Haunted History of Halloween. Give that for later. Charlton Heston, Roddy McDowell. 35th anniversary, full screen edition, unfortunately, of Planet of the Apes. I only paid $3.99 for it. And it's on two discs. And it has a ton of extras. So. I love this movie. Uh, some critics loved it when it came out. Some hated it. Some hated it because the language in the screenplay is contemporary. Whereas it's not telling a contemporary story. Anyway, Paul Newman and Robert Redford in a special edition of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. A lot of interesting things about this film. This, by the way, includes a lengthy documentary that was made at the time for Canadian television. No, not Canadian television. It was made for uh, film schools. A 45 minute documentary is all it says here. An audio commentary by director George Royal. Hal David, Robert Crawford, and Conrad Hall. Includes the original theatrical trailer. One of the Neat things are interesting, offbeat things about this film is that, with three exceptions, there are there is no music in this movie, no incidental music. There are three montage sequences that is all music with no dialogue or any or any you know ambient sounds, just the music. This is the film that the hit song, Rain Drops Keep Falling on My Head, came from. You might be thinking, well, how could they put that in, in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, which is, at least in the end, very violent, but. Director George Roy Hill mentions um, I don't remember. He mentioned it in the documentary. That's where he mentioned it. Uh, they had to film a 
sequence in Mexico because it would have been illegal in the US. Um, I forget what he called it, but they rig wires to the front legs of the horses. And when, when they want the horses to fall, they yank on them and pulls the legs out from under the horses and they go down in spectacular fashion. That has been illegal in the US for a long time. It was already illegal when this was made in the 60s because it can cause uh, irreparable damage to the horse. So that was, he shot that in Mexico. Where it wasn't illegal. Stories of Lost Souls. I have, we have so many adaptations of this uh, story on DVD. This is the one with Jackie Chan. Widescreen presentation of Around the World in 80 Days. Okay, we have Dish Network, and Dish is constantly adding new channels, and one of the channels they carry is called Rural TV. Rural TV runs stuff exactly like this. I think I paid about five dollars for this set at uh, Best Buy. Shortliners of the South. Won't bother showing in the rear because there's nothing, no pictures or anything. Steam Giants Across America. Twilight of Steam. And Steam in the 50s and 60s. Okay, I don't have time to get to all of that. Well, I'll do this one. And this one. And this one. This is the complete original series of the original George of the Jungle. Each episode was comprised of three shorts. One would be a George of the Jungle, one would be uh, Tom Slick, and the other one was Super Chicken. And uh, no, I'm not going to try and uh, sing the theme to Super Chicken because it's fast. You have to be able to sing fast. And I can't sing six. Blah. I can't sing. I can't even talk fast. I just sing fast. 17 episodes. The reason there are so few episodes is because even though it was a hit series, 
this was produced by the same guy who produced Rocky and Bullwinkle and Friends. And that had to be animated in Mexico because of budgetary constraints. In fact, um, their sponsor was insisting on it because they own an animation studio in Mexico. But he had such nightmares producing that out of Mexico because there were a lot of continuity errors and color shifts where the wall behind one character would be blue and then the next shot it would be purple and the next shot it would be white and then the next shot it would be purple again and so he elected to have the pilot episode animated in America and he was so thrilled with the results that he kept uh, animating the series in America which was expensive and so even though it was a hit series it was losing money he continued it on as long as he could financially but by episode 17 there was just no way to keep going but if you've never seen the original George 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 of the Jungle run to you and me check this out I especially love the the ending but they have the cars real life cars crashing and two trains head-on collision a car going up a ramp and then flying down and landing into it's all cut to the music and it's I think it's cool. I, I thought it was it, it was it was cool when I was a kid. Okay, here's Pierce Brosnan in Around the World in Eighty Days. We must have half a dozen Around the World in Eighty Days. And this is a documentary on the whole video nasties. Uh, brouhaha that took place in England where they banned I think it was 72 movies 72 horror movies all but one of which came from either the US or um, I think it, uh, it's either Spain or Italy where the others came from but most of them came from America Video Nasties. This is a limited edition copy. Uh, this is number 3589. I think they they either made 4000 or 5000. Disc 1 is Video Nasties, Moral Panic, Censorship, and Videotape. That is the um, documentary on the whole thing. And then there are 50 minutes of pre-certified video company ident's, which are you know the home video logos that would start on, on the tape. Um, 50 minutes of those. Image gallery featuring artwork from the 80 titles included on the DPP's Section 3 list. Total running time of disc one three hours. Disc two original trailers plus newly filmed introductions to the 39 nasties uh, that were successfully prosecuted in UK courts and deemed liable to uh, uh, liable to deprave and corrupt. That's what cool. you can either select to watch the trailers without uh, the review or you can do it with the review. I prefer doing it with the reviews because they're really good. Image gallery featuring artwork from all 39 video releases. Original English subtitles uh, for trailers. Running time of disc two over five hours. Disc three, original trailers plus newly filmed introductions to the 33 nasties that were initially banned but then subsequently acquitted and removed from the DPP's list. Image gallery featuring artwork from all 33 releases, optional English subtitles for trailers, 
Running time over four hours. Total running time, 13 hours and 25 minutes. Now, this is weird. I didn't notice this before. This came from the UK. That's where it came from. It's region coded region 1. I have never noticed that before. And it's PAL standard. I don't know if you can make that out with my camera. But it says PAL. And it has a UK rating of 18, meaning you have to be 18 uh, to buy this. It says encoded region 1. That is weird. I'm probably not going to be able to make that out either. Yeah, what's cool about this is it came with, in addition to the three discs, reproductions of um, lobby cards to some of the banned films. These are all These are all postcards. But I don't know anyone nutty enough to use it as a postcard. It's collectible. I think I have this movie on DVD. Cannibal Holocaust. The Driller Killer. I was working uh, at Channel 17, the first station I worked for when this came out, and the commercial for it came in on 16 millimeter film, and the station manager came in and he said, load this on a projector, I want to see this before I put it on the air. And he ran the commercial and he said, we are not airing that. No way. It was a commercial for I Spit on Your Grave. Okay, Damaged Brain. And strong uncut version. Zombie flesh eaters. Okay, that is all we have time for today because as you can see, this went really long and it's going to wind up taking 87 hours to upload. Until next time, stay awesome, and peace. I believe two more have been found, and a Hong Kong release has been found. Anyway, that has 3,132 views. Then there's cleaning and NES cartridge and label, 4,531 views. There is the video where I compare my Japanese Sega Master System with my Western Sega Master System Model 1. That has 6,004 views. Uh, there's a video where I played a 12 inch maxi single in its entirety of uh, the Falco song, Rock the Amadeus, the American edit. It has 6,993 views. Zuma, Deluxe Play video. 7,260 views. Ultraman VCDs from Movie Freak 5150. He sent me 
over a hundred and maybe close to 150 Ultraman and Godzilla BCDs. These are pre-reports, not pirated copies. 27,059 views. I did a review of the GameCube game, Power Rangers Dino Thunder. No play footage, I just talked. 39,666 views. And my top watched video is a Laserdisc clip video. Sadly, I've had to take most of my Laserdisc clip videos down because of YouTube and copyright issues, but that hasn't happened with this one. So laser this clip video and I show in its entirety a Beetle Bailey uh, made for television. Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna A Spec again with another DVD Blu-ray collections video. Within the next week or two I'm going to be collecting steel books as well. And I've been trying to decide the best way to handle uh, indicating which videos have steel books in them and which ones don't. Because I don't want to change the name of the title of this series. What I've come up with so far is say DVD and Blu-ray collections video part seven and then in parentheses steel book fortifies for those uh, steel books. You can let me know down there whether you think that's a stupid idea or a brilliant idea or whatever. Now I'm going to be shouting out two channels in this video, one in the UK and one in the US. Since I received a lot of subscribers from the UK when I first started this channel, I'll start there. The channel in the UK that I'm shouting out is called Snaztastic. Now I've been subscribed to him for quite some time, a long time. As you can gather from his name, he uh, is into retro gaming and specifically he loves the SNES, the Super Nintendo. In fact, his collection of SNES games is beautiful. He has them all boxed, original boxes, and then he has them in the protective uh, clear sleeves that you can buy in cases. And boxes of Laserdisc that I had uh, duplicate copies of. And he was nice enough to send me some boxes in response or in return of vinyl LPs, which I really, really appreciated. Don't tell him this though. He didn't really need to do that. I was more than happy to send him duplicate copies of lasers. Anyway, Snestastic and Adam Spence. Links down there. Now, I have been trying to decide whether to bring this up. I finally decided that I would. I normally don't look at the number of subscribers that I have. I normally don't go into the analytics. I just go about my business uploading videos and commenting to people's videos and I try and reply to every comment made to the videos that I do. But I noticed recently that while the last time I had looked I was close to 2,000 subscribers and I noticed I've lost over 300 subscribers. So I went into the analytics to try and determine what was going on. And if you look at the graph for the uh, number of subscribers that I have, it's a flat line and then it'll spike straight up and then right back down again to the flat line. I'll go over and then I'll go straight down, and straight back up, and really really clear transparent cases 
and he has them all up on shelves and his collection just looks beautiful so if you're into the Super Nintendo and retro gaming uh, you might want to check out SNES Tastic. Now the channel here in the US Adam Spence. I've known Adam for a long time as well. Uh, we both belong to a group a number of people belong to this group actually. I haven't participated actively in quite some time but I am a member of this group. The group is comprised of myself Adam Spence, Gamer Jitsu, Jay Blackheart, and a number of others. And it's called. I don't use strong language on this channel, so I'll say the Bull S H I T Gamers. Now, for whatever reason, they took to calling me Papa Smurf within this group but we were doing podcasts on Skype and then Adam would take the uh, footage he would take footage from our channels and he would use graphics and he would um, put together these videos that were basically a Reader's Digest version of our podcast. His channel primarily concentrates on gaming and laser discs, and I'm afraid I'm to blame for him getting into laser discs. For a while, I was sending him bike up, spike down, and you know, over and over again. Although obviously the spike downs are more uh, in number than the spike ups, because otherwise I wouldn't have lost 300 subscribers. Lately, I have been getting a lot of new subscribers, which I greatly appreciate. I've appreciate all of my subscribers so if you have subscribed to my channel lately then I really appreciate it but at looking at my videos I cannot determine a rhyme or a reason as to what's going on what videos are turning people off and which videos are turning people on and what am I saying that is turning people off I'm not going to say what am I saying that turns people on because I'm an old man. But uh, at looking at my more, more popular videos, there is no rhyme or reason. The eighth most watched video, and don't worry, I have plenty of DVDs and Blu-rays to show, is a video called Band in the USA, Disney Film Song of the South. In that video, I talked about how Disney has sworn that they will never, ever let it be seen in the U.S. again. Not in theaters, not on TV, not on video, not in a classroom of film students, nothing. It's readily available in numerous countries, but not here. I have a Japanese import. At the time, it was the only known Japanese import of Song of the South. But since then, 